Afghanistan's economy is in tatters after years of war. Is Chinese investment the new hope for Afghanistan? What are the risks for China? Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. Afghanistan's fragile economy has lost around a third of its value in the past year. While international organizations scale back following the withdrawal of NATO forces, China has promised Kabul billions of dollars in new investments, saying the Chinese are ready to play a constructive role. As CCTV's Natalie Carney reports, Beijing is also prepared to help protect the border it shares with Afghanistan. Back in February, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi made a commitment to help rebuild Afghanistan. The international community needs to give support and encouragement. China is ready to play a constructive role and will provide the necessary facilitation anytime if it is required by various parties in Afghanistan. China has promised $240 million in free assistance and has begun exploring Afghanistan's vast natural resources, including a nearly $4.5 billion investment in the INAC copper mine and winning a contract to explore oil options at the Amudara River Basin. The economic relations between Afghanistan and China have three dimensions. One is the foreign aid dimension of it. China has provided so far over $370 million to Afghanistan. And it's the investment dimension, which has uh, which is over $2 billion of investment, but really not yet materialized. These are initial phases of investment. And then there's the export-import that normally comes through Pakistan, and that's over a billion dollars. Much of the Chinese commodities imported to Afghanistan are sold here at the Sadiq Omar Mall in central Kabul. This is the most famous electronics market in all of Afghanistan. Seven floors full of goods, all from China. Merchants here are saying, while quality has improved from China, the ability for the Afghan people to buy these products is decreasing. 32-year-old Mirwais runs a shop in the mall and says 80 percent of the products he sells are from China. Recently, the Chinese products are of better quality and lower price. So this is the reason we sell a lot of the Chinese products. Bilateral trade reached $373 million back in 2010, yet the security situation has worsened since then. At the same time, our overall business has gone down. This is because of the insecurity in Afghanistan. The security has a direct link with the economy. China is helping to mediate peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban insurgents, and it will also provide Afghanistan with security equipment and training. Beijing is eager to protect its Afghan interests, but also its 76-kilometer border with the volatile country. The Chinese and the Afghan government have been in constant dialogue. Uh, we have had very high-level security officials of China coming and visiting Afghanistan and talking about how to secure INAC, how to secure the Amur Darya uh, river basin investment, and also how to secure the bordering provinces of China, um, uh, which are basically what they see as a critical threat to uh, the um, uh, Xinjiang province. China could help bring new hope to Afghanistan, but must take calculated moves. While Beijing says it does not want to replace international forces in Afghanistan, it has promised to play a big commercial role in rebuilding the country. Natalie Carney for CCTV in Kabul, Afghanistan. Joining us now in the studio is former Ambassador Omar Saman. He is now a senior advisor to Afghan Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah. From Shanghai, Yu Ching Xiao a senior fellow at the Shanghai Institutes for International Studies. We're also joined from Toronto in Canada by Kamran Bukhari. He's an expert on Middle Eastern and South Asian affairs for Stratfor, a geopolitical intelligence company. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Dr. Shao, let's start in Shanghai. Uh, let's look at the big picture here. What does China's current relationship with Afghanistan look like? Is it mainly economic or does China play a security role in Afghanistan as well. Okay. Um, China's relation with Afghanistan is very important with regard to China's uh, security on the western part of the border um, because um, um, uh, since the Americans are withdrawing their troops, um, the Afghan security sec situation has been decreasing. So I think the most concern of China is the security situation in Afghanistan, because if it uh, uh, continues to be worsening, then certainly Central Asia and South Asia would be affected by the uh, security situation in Afghanistan. So uh, that would become a kind of threat 
to the uh, western part of China, the stability and the peace of that part of China. And then, because China had the initiative of one belt and one road, so actually when China want, wants to implement this strategy, it needs a stable and peaceful uh, uh, environment. Uh, so so uh, the security in Afghanistan is very important for China. So, Ambassador, clearly China has a lot of interests in a stable Afghanistan. Give me your assessment. You're right in the middle there now. You're working in Kabul. You are an advisor to... Abdullah Abdullah, the chief executive, uh, what is your assessment of the current China-Afghanistan relationship? Well, this is a 60-year-old relationship, uh, and it has gone through its ups and downs. Uh, Afghans clearly remember the fact that China stood by us when the Soviets invaded us. The Chinese do not openly talk about it, but it's a well-known fact now as part of history that China was a country that also helped Afghanistan fight the Soviets in a covert manner. But uh, this is very much appreciated by Afghans. China has always been seen as a friend, as a neighbor and as a friend. Even though we have about 70-something kilometers of border, it's small, but it is strategic. Now, from Kabul's point of view, our uh, relations has several dimensions. The one issue that hasn't been talked about is the role that China plays in the peace process that is underway right now with the Taliban. Security, as Dr. Shao said, is a very important component. Terrorism uh, is an issue that we all are affected by, and China has concerns on the western frontier. We have concerns about elements and groups that also operate in our region of the world. Then there's, of, of course, the, the role that China plays in Afghanistan's economy. But that has several sub-dimensions. It has the mining factor, uh, natural resources, uh, it has the connectivity factor, the roads and railroads that are intended to connect China to Central Asia, to Afghanistan, and then going either east, south, or west. That is being worked on. But right the border now. is closed at the moment, right? No, these are, this is, these are uh, connectivities that are taking place from China to Central Asia right, right. and then through Afghanistan. Okay. The border with China is a very tough uh, mountainous border, of course. Uh, and then uh, th there is the role that China plays with Afghanistan's development and aid that was mentioned earlier and trade that is taking place. Now, these are the main items on the menu between Afghanistan and China. Kamran Bukhari, Afghanistan, as we know, still faces enormous challenges, both economic, uh, security-wise. What role do you think China has in terms of security? You know, as the ambassador just said to us, China plays a role, of course, in uh, stabilizing Afghanistan, but that is as part of a group. But bilaterally, what does China do? Yes, I, I agree with the ambassador that uh, when he said that the, the one aspect that's not given a whole lot of attention is the Chinese role in mediating uh, a, a reconciliation or a peace process with insurgents. Uh, but on that level, uh, you know, the, there, are, there are limitations in terms of what uh, Beijing can do. Uh, Beijing, uh, you know, doesn't have the kind of inside, uh, insight into uh, the, the Taliban phenomenon and, and its complexities and its various, you know, offshoots and factions. Uh, so, th in that regard, I think that the Chinese will play with the Pakistanis and, and, and work through Islamabad, and, and then that becomes complicated given Islamabad's tensions with Kabul and vice versa. Uh, when we talk about reconciliation, we also have to talk about the Qataris, because, uh, you know, if there is one particular hub or, or, uh, or office or politburo from where the Taliban are able to operate, that's in Doha. And so it's, it, then China has to work with the Qataris as well. Of course, the U.S. forces still have, you know, a residual presence, and, and it will be there for some time to come. So the Chinese also have to factor in the, uh, the, the United States angle as well. And now with Iran on its way to international rehabilitation because of the nuclear deal, uh, we should expect Iran to also work with the Chinese uh, and, and, you know, the other way around in order to deal with this issue. And I think that's pretty much the biggest issue. As far as the economic projects are concerned, they haven't really taken off, and it'll be a while before they do because of the security factor. And then, of course, as, as Umar mentioned, uh, the border isn't that long, and it, it, you know, it's not really passable. So it's not a physical threat as much as it is a geopolitical threat uh, in terms of the context of South Asia and Central Asia. Dr. Shah, we're hearing, though, of a very complex situation in that particular part 
of the world. So how does China get above that and deal with Afghanistan on a bilateral basis, try and bring some stability to it? And as you've pointed out, I mean, it's in China's interest to see a stable Afghanistan next door. I think uh, on the bilateral level, China has been uh, supporting Afghanistan central government for a long time. And China always uh, insists that we should respect the central government in Afghanistan to have enough authority to uh, lead the peace uh, process in, within uh, Afghanistan. And China thinks that uh, uh, the uh, political reconciliation should be led by Afghan people. And uh, uh, economically, I think China's uh, investment uh, could help Afghans' uh, uh, economic development. And also, uh, China has pushed a lot on the multilateral uh, mechanism, the regional mechanism. For example, uh, China has hosted the uh, Istanbul process uh, recently in Beijing, and also um, within the SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization framework, China, as the core member of this group, um, has uh, uh, initiated that SCO should also help Afghanistan to uh, stabilize its situation. So with the enlargement of uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization as the two new members, India and Pakistan, uh, has uh, come in, I think uh, SCO can play a bigger role in Afghanistan's uh, uh, political reconciliation and also uh, stabilization. Ambassador? I agree, uh, and, and we see a bigger role uh, played by China over the years. Uh, if, you, if you look at the trend, it's been growing. Um, what uh, I would say is that China uh, has real concerns about security uh, in its own neighborhood, uh, on its western flank, uh, and uh, in regards to militants that uh, may be using camps and hubs, whether in Pakistan or in, at times in Afghanistan, in order to destabilize uh, Ch uh, China itself. Uh, so in that regard, we are all joining hands and we are trying to cooperate with each other and the SCO is one mechanism to which we are doing this. Now on the reconciliation side, uh, yes, China and Pakistan who have had uh, long-standing relations uh, and warm relations are uh, working on this, but Afghans expect China to work with Afghans uh, on a bilateral basis on this process as well, which they are doing. They have a special envoy, aside from having an ambassador in Kabul, they have a special envoy that deals with Afghanistan and Pakistan, and we welcome that. And they have to look at the Afghan situation and the Afghan peace process uh, from an Afghan perspective as well. It is very important for them to understand what is at stake, what, uh, uh, what are the, the consequences if we don't get this right. On, and I, I think that on all these uh, issues, the, the, the Afghan government has engaged the Chinese and vice versa. Uh, and the Chinese who had initially thought that uh, by getting into Afghanistan through some investments and through some deals, especially in the mining sector, in the copper sector, uh, that uh, this would take off rather quickly, are finding out that it is taking time. And as uh, Mr. Bukhari uh, alluded to, it is taking time because the ground situation is, is still not uh, mature and it, it is not enabling. Uh, we need to make sure that there's enough security in Afghanistan and China uh, is helping in that regard and I think Afghans very much appreciate that. Kamran, you mentioned a whole host of factors, forces rather, that impact China's role in that part of the world. Uh, break that down for us. I mean, how does China relate to Pakistan, as you pointed out, the changing relationship between the United States and Iran, the role of the United States itself. What is China do? Yeah, I think in terms of Pakistan, uh, the Chinese are looking at the, the China-Pakistan economic corridor, uh, which, you know, to essentially, to, you know, it's a given that if the CPEC is going to take off as a project linking Kashgar all the way to, to Gwadar, then that can't happen if uh, militancy is, is spilling over from Afghanistan and vice versa. Uh, you know, there are militants in uh, Pakistan who spill over into Afghanistan as well. So it's in Chinese interest, not just in terms of its bilateral relationship, but also its relationship with Pakistan, and then the overall regional uh, situation, regional dynamic. Uh, I mean, I, it would be fair to say that in a post-NATO Afghanistan, 
I think China sees itself as the great power in the region that has the responsibility to make sure that things don't get out of hand. Uh, you know, they're already out of hand, but you know, the, there should be some method to the madness, and, and chaos should be uh, kept within you know, tolerable parameters. So they'll work with, you know, bilaterally with Kabul, with Islamabad. And, and what would be fascinating, because one of the things that is not often talked about is the Iranian influence in Afghanistan, which in many ways is, is a second only to that of you know, Pakistan, uh, given that it also, Iran also shares a very large border. Now, with Iran wanting to play a lead role uh, you know, in its surroundings, especially after the, the, the nuclear deal, uh, we'll have to see how Beijing, which enjoys a very warm relationship with Tehran, uh, how Tehran and, uh, and Beijing work together to stabilize Afghanistan. It's going to, it's going to be a difficult, uh, uh, if you will, arrangement for the Chinese to bring in all these various pieces of the puzzle to make sure that you know, Afghanistan is headed in the direction that it wants it to.